Welcome back to the respiratory chain in biochemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so we've been talking a lot about the complexes in the mitochondrial respiratory chain, and generally the ones that most courses talk about are complexes one, two, three, and four. And in terms of delivering reduced cofactors, such as NADH and FADH2 into the electron transport chain, particularly complex one over here, NADH dehydrogenase, except NADH from various sources, various pathways. This enzyme over here, complex two, usually we hear of it accepting electrons from FADH2. However, complex two is just one enzyme, okay? It reacts with one molecule only, and that's succinate. In fact, complex two, if you remember from one of the previous videos where we went into it in more detail, complex two is actually a Krebs cycle enzyme, succinate dehydrogenase. If you look at any TCA cycle, you'll see that enzyme. And this actually, this complex as part of the electron transport chain is the Krebs cycle enzyme. Now, the naming of the complexes is somewhat historical. And in general, when we talk about the complexes, we're talking about these gigantic integral membrane proteins. But it turns out there's another protein that actually, in some ways, is just as important as, as complex two in terms of delivering electrons to the electron transport chain for the production of coenzyme Q in the reduced state so that you can pump protons. It turns out that protein or that enzyme is listed up here, electron transferring flavor protein dehydrogenase. Sometimes it's given this name, which is sort of um, whited out a little bit, but you can see it there, ETFQ oxidoreductase. That stands for electron transferring flavor protein ubiquinone oxidoreductase. Okay, I might just abbreviate it as ETFQ dehydrogenase. Okay, this enzyme is involved in delivering electrons to coenzyme Q from all other sources of FADH2. Okay, remember that this Krebs cycle enzyme um, in uh, complex two, the oxidation of succinate, is not the only source of FADH2. In fact, we have lots of other enzymes. One in particular, which is shown here, is acyl-CoA dehydrogenase. In fact, that enzyme is a beta oxidation enzyme. So if we get FADH2, well, how the heck do we get that FADH2 into the electron transport chain if this enzyme only reacts with succinate? Well, it turns out that acyl-CoA dehydrogenase is going to run its beta oxidation reaction, and you're going to get electrons to FAD, and that's going to reduce that to FADH2. Okay? Now, it turns out there's another protein, and don't confuse, confuse this one with electron transferring flavor protein dehydrogenase. This protein is just called electron transferring flavor protein. It turns out that in order to get the electrons from acyl-CoA dehydrogenase to the dehydrogenase up here, you have to go through an intermediate carrier called electron transferring flavor protein. This electron transferring flavor protein is going to take the electrons from every enzyme, um, at least that is in the mitochondria, that's going to produce FADH2. So they'll all, all those electrons will initially go to ETF or electron transferring flavor protein as sort of, sort of an intermediate carrier. Then electron transferring flavor protein will deliver those electrons to ETFQ dehydrogenase or ETFQ oxidoreductase, and again, it's going to deliver those electrons to FAD, reducing it to FADH2, and those electrons one at a time are going to be transferred through a series of iron sulfur centers and ultimately going to reduce ubiquinone to ubiquinol, and that's also going to contribute to the ubiquinol pool. In some ways, I consider ETFQ oxidoreductase, or in other words, electron transferring flavor protein dehydrogenase, I sort of jokingly call this complex 2.5, just because it occurs before complex 3, but it also is very important in delivering electrons um, into the ubiquinone pool, okay, for production of ubiquinol. Okay, so any so the key is any enzyme that takes electrons and produces FADH2, other than succinate dehydrogenase is going to deliver those electrons to electron transferring flavor protein and then electron transferring flavor protein ubiquinone oxidoreductase is going to take those electrons and reduce ubiquinone to ubiquinol. Okay? This enzyme, ETFQ dehydrogenase, does not pump protons. Okay? It's not a proton pump, but it is a significant source of electrons for reducing ubiquinone to ubiquinol. Okay? So just remember that. Complex 2 is a TCA cycle enzyme, 
but when you name it succinate dehydrogenase, it literally only reacts with succinate. Any other FADH2 that's produced in the mitochondria is going to have to be scavenged by the electron transferring flava protein and electron transferring flava protein Q oxidoreductase. Okay? And then those are going to be delivered to the Q pool. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense and clears anything up on excess FADH2 that we might have in the cell. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications.